Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about the next parameter after center of mass that is the angular velocity. So what is angular velocity? It is angular displacement per unit time. As the name suggests, the way we define velocity in case of translational motion. So how did we define velocity? It was nothing but the change of displacement per unit time. So how an object gets displaced from one point to another with time defines the velocity of that object. Similarly, when I am talking about angular velocity, instead of displacement, it is now angular displacement per unit time. It is generally denoted by omega. Let us take the example of a rigid body. Let us suppose this is a rigid body and let us suppose this is the axis of rotation. So this body is rotating about this axis. So the, this, these terms angular will come into picture when I am talking about rotation, right? Because in this case, in case of rotation, as I mentioned before, every particle which is present in this entire object will be moving in a circular path. Right, so there is no linear motion involved in this case. So let us suppose there is a particle here. Say some particle here, some particle here and so on. So wherever you have a particle, how will the motion of this particle look like? It will be a circular path. It will be in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation and that too the center of this circular path should uh, lie on this axis of rotation. Right, that is what we studied in one of our previous slides. So this is how the motion will take place. Now let us look at the displacement part. Now let us suppose this particle P is at this point at some time T. Now after some time it comes somewhere here. Let us suppose initially it was at this point X. After some time it reaches the point Y. Again after some time it reaches the point Z. Again after some time it reaches this point S. Right? So this is how it is moving in a circular path. Correct? Okay. So what do I mean by angular displacement? So that means, let us suppose initially it was at this point x and in some time, in some small interval of time, say delta t, it reached this point y. So what is the angle that it traversed in the small time interval delta t? That is some small angle delta theta. Right? So that means we can say that in a time interval delta t, it covered a small angle delta theta. So this delta theta is nothing but the angular displacement, right? And this angular displacement per unit time is defined as the angular velocity, right? Now similar to how, I mean very much analogous to our um, translational motion, we have something called average angular velocity and instantaneous angular velocity in this case also. You remember we, talk, we spoke about average velocity and instantaneous velocity in uh, one of our previous chapters when we discussed linear motions, right? So similarly in this case also you will have average angular velocity. So how will you define average angular velocity? Now this average angular velocity in this case will always be defined over a period of time. Right? So if you want to calculate, if you say that what is the average angular velocity over a time period of say t or delta t or whatever. So in this case, when it moves from point x to point y, if you want to know the average angular velocity between this time interval delta t. So this will be given as delta theta by delta t. So that is how you define the average angular velocity. Now if you talk about the instantaneous angular velocity. So when you use the word instantaneous as the name suggests, it means the velocity at a specific instant of time. So average angular velocity is always over a period of time. That means there is a time interval starting from t1 to t2. Right? So from T1 to T2, over this interval, what is the velocity? So that is your average angular velocity. But if I say, what is the velocity at T1 or what is the velocity at T2? So that they, those are the instantaneous values of angular velocity. So how do you define or how do we denote the instantaneous angular velocity? As, as we talk about instantaneous angular velocity, this angle, this time period delta T decreases 
as a result this delta theta also decreases so when i speak of instantaneous i am comparing two very nearby points so therefore we will denote it as d theta by dt so this is how we denote instantaneous angular velocity now angular velocity is a vector quantity because it not only has a magnitude associated with it but it also has a direction now what is the direction of angular velocity it is directed along the axis of rotation so if this is your axis of rotation the direction of the axis of rotation denotes the direction of your angular velocity now let us look at the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity how is linear velocity how are linear and angular velocities related to each other now in order to derive a relationship between linear and angular velocity let us again consider a rigid body like this and this one is its axis of rotation okay now axis of rotation also denotes the direction of angular velocity right okay now let us consider a particular particle say this particle p so this particle p will be moving in a circular path like this and this will be the center of this circle now at some instant of time let us suppose it is at point p after some time it reaches point p dash so what is the angle or angular displacement involved let us suppose the angular displacement is delta theta and this it moves from point p to p dash in time delta t right so how do we define linear velocity what is linear velocity it is nothing but displacement per unit time right now i am not talking about angular displacement i am talking about linear displacement right so that is we can write it as ds by dt so what is this linear displacement it is nothing but this arc length we are talking about the arc length so now what is the relationship of the arc length with the angle subtended at the center so we can write this ds as r into d theta so if this small angle is d theta and if this radius is r we can write it as r d theta divided by dt so now d theta by dt that is angular displacement per unit time so this can be written as angular velocity so from this we see that linear velocity is the product of the radius and the angular velocity so this spoke only about the magnitude here we did not consider the direction at all but since velocity being a vector quantity the direction has to be considered so now let us talk about the direction now we have understood that the magnitude is given by the product of these two quantities and these two quantities are vector quantities so let us see what happens to the cross product of these two quantities so let us try to calculate the cross product of omega and r let us consider origin to be this point which lies on the axis of rotation so what would be the position vector of this point p this would be r right so this r denotes the position vector now omega cross r would be equal to omega cross what is this r if you look at this triangle cop if you look at the triangle cop you can see that r is equal to oc plus cp right so this r can be written as oc plus cp now as per the distributive law we can write it as omega cross oc plus omega cross cp now what is omega cross oc now omega is in this direction oc is also in this direction right so a cross b is ab sin theta similarly omega cross oc is omega oc sin theta theta will be equal to 0 because both are along the same direction therefore this value will be equal to 0 so we are left with omega cross cp so now omega cross r becomes equal to omega cross cp so what should be the direction of omega cross cp so the direction of this should be perpendicular to omega and also perpendicular 
to CP. That is how we define the direction of cross product, right? So when we say that C is equal to A cross B, that means C is perpendicular to A and C is also perpendicular to B. So that means this omega cross CP, whatever would be the value of this, that should be perpendicular to omega as well as perpendicular to CP. So therefore, we say that omega cross CP is tangential to the point P. So that means if you consider a tangent at this point, what happens? It is perpendicular to omega because the direction of omega is like this. So it is perpendicular to omega and it is also perpendicular to CP. Right? So that means this tangential vector can become the cross product of omega cross CP. Right? So now this CP, we denote it as R perpendicular. That is the perpendicular component of the radius vector or the position vector. So omega cross R perpendicular is defined as V. So this becomes the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. So linear velocity is equal to cross product of angular velocity and the position vector and the magnitude. So from here also you see that the magnitude is given by omega r. Right. So in this case what do we see this since we are considering here rotation about a fixed axis. Right. Therefore the direction of omega that is the direction of the angular velocity remains constant. But in case we consider the rotation about a fixed point, for example, the, our spinning top or the example of the, the oscillating table fan, in all those cases, we do not have a fixed axis because the axis itself keeps moving, right? So in that case, the direction of omega is also not constant. However, in this lesson, we have restricted our studies only to rotation about a fixed axis. Therefore, here we will see that omega, the direction of omega will always remain constant. So this is how we establish a relationship between linear and angular velocity. So what do we see? Linear velocity is the cross product of angular velocity and the radius vector. Now that we have talked about angular velocity, let us talk about angular acceleration. So angular acceleration is again nothing but time rate of change of angular velocity. So these things are analogous to whatever we studied in linear motion, right? In linear motion also we saw that rate of change of displacement was velocity, rate of change of velocity was acceleration. Similarly here, change of angular displacement with time was angular velocity. Again, time rate of change of angular velocity is angular acceleration. So it is generally denoted by alpha, the way angular velocity is denoted by omega, angular acceleration is denoted by alpha. So we define alpha is equal to d omega by dt. So for a fixed axis of rotation, as I mentioned before also, the direction of omega does not change with time. So the direction of omega will remain fixed. However, so in that case, alpha will be equal to d omega by dt. So what is the change here? Here alpha and omega were both vector quantities because the direction of omega was also changing with time. Now if the direction of omega remains same with time, so we can write it in scalar form that is alpha is equal to d omega by dt. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.